Hello everyone and welcome to the Vortex, where lies and falsehoods are trapped and exposed. I'm Michael Voris. The church is in one gigantic mess. There are many reasons and causes and consequences of this sad reality. The consequences are, it boils down to one major point. She is severely hampered in her divine mission to evangelize the world. And since that is the mandate from our blessed Lord, go out and teach all nations, baptize them, and teach them to observe everything I have commanded you, then we need to get down to the business of fixing the causes and reasons that are handcuffing the mission. Much of the reasons or causes of the mess can be laid at the feet of wicked or poorly formed clergy, including many bishops. They have adopted worldliness and thrown off sanctity, helped along by praise and applause from the world. As a quick aside, this is why you cannot have weak men ever running anything. They will bow to their own weaknesses every time. So, when sanctity begins to give way, worldliness begins to creep in. It's really as simple as two sides of a scale. As one goes up, the other goes down, and vice versa. Right now, it's a fair conclusion to say the scales are tipping much more in favor of worldliness than they are sanctity. This happens, again, because of the acceptance of worldliness in all its variant forms. For example, the homosexual agenda found its way into the church decades ago. Weak men, damaged men, began swelling the ranks of the clergy. They had no business entering seminary or being accepted. But they did, and they were. As their numbers increased, they attained sufficient influence to be one of the great contributors to the scales being tipped. Huge numbers of them spent their vocations dealing with their own psychological issues as opposed to getting the souls of those in their charge to heaven. Heaven and sanctity became back burner issues for them until they eventually just dropped off the radar altogether. So they focused their energies on convincing themselves that their sexual desires were okay, that they were normal, that they should be accepted in their sexual passions. And to do this, they co-opted various parishes and chanceries and religious orders into their little demented games. Little by little, wielding their spiritual authority, they were able to sneak into the Catholic mind that homosexuality isn't all really that bad, that we need to focus on the person out of charity and downplay or ignore the person's sinful behavior. Sinful behavior which ends people up in hell. Catholics, Love weakened in their faith from decades of rotten catechesis for other reasons as well, fell for the propaganda hook, line, and sinker. Soon the mantra became, all are welcome, and as a result, Catholics in America now support, get this, legalizing same-sex marriage at a higher rate than any other religion. And it's a majority of Catholics to boot, 54%. With broad cultural support and majority Catholic support, the homofascist mafia is now able to go on the offensive against the church, and that is exactly what is happening in the Archdiocese of San Francisco. This homofascist monolith must be confronted and stared down. But before it can happen on a cultural level, it must happen in the church. That is the first battle that must be fought, and that is what is happening in the Archdiocese of San Francisco under the leadership of Archbishop Salvatore Corleone, which means Savior with the heart of a lion, fittingly enough. In what comes as no surprise to practically anybody, San Francisco has become ground zero in the battle over homosexuality. And to show how far the battle has advanced against the church, the battle is no longer about the rightness or evil of it, but if a Catholic community can simply teach its own religious teachings about it. An all-out PR war and smear campaign has been let loose against Archbishop Cordelione because the diabolical knows very well that if the church can find its footing on this, then the battle can be taken to the culture. Therefore, it is imperative from the diabolical point of view that the archbishop and his supporters be defeated, which makes it imperative from the church's point of view that the archbishop win this war. So he needs your prayers. He needs your support. You need to write letters to the Apostolic Nuncio here in the United States and tell him you support 
what Archbishop Salvatore Cordelioni is doing. He cannot be bullied by secular forces or malignant forces within the church that make him look bad. That's the point. That's what they're trying to do. They are whipping up a smear campaign to make the Archbishop look bad, to put pressure on the nuncio so he will travel back to Rome and tell Pope Francis, oh, there's all kinds of controversy. He's a mean man. You need to fire him. He needs you, the Archbishop needs you to contact him and let him know you have his back. He needs you to contact the nuncio, the apostolic nuncio here in the United States. You need to get on social media outlets and defend him and go on the offensive against his attackers in and out of the church. Unfortunately, they're in the church. He needs you to rally around him because in rallying around any faithful bishop, you are rallying around our blessed Lord himself. Make your voice heard on this. The tremors from this San Francisco earthquake will be felt throughout the church. This homofascist monolith must be shattered. It is, in bat it is in a battle to the death. So the question is, are you? God love you. I'm Michael Voris.